I've been very interested in these Linux phones lately, particularly the upcoming Librem 5, which I pre-ordered. I may not get it for a while, maybe even in 2020. So while I wait, I decided to learn more about Linux programming and see if I can write an app for the Librem 5. So here's a newbie's attempt at programming for Linux and see what I accomplished. Coming up next. Just a little bit of my background. I'm a longtime chief software architect and C programmer. Although I've really programmed in most of the existing programming languages. However, the bulk of my experience with Linux has been with writing server-side applications using PHP or Java. I have never made a GUI app for Linux before. In fact, I seldom use the Linux GUI or otherwise known as a desktop environment. So I had to learn a little. I have several apps on the iOS and Google Play App Store, notably my privacy platform, Brax.me. Anyway, it was interesting to see how difficult it would be to write an app for Linux and something that could work on the Linux phone form factor. I specifically tried to target the Librem 5 and possibly the upcoming Pine phone to see if I can make it work on these. I learned that the Librem 5 uses Pure OS as the main version of Linux and this uses a desktop environment called GNOME. I tried loading Pure OS on my laptop, but there were so many problems with the drivers, so I tried running Ubuntu 18 and it recognized all the devices on my old ThinkPad. I also chose Ubuntu 18 because this version of Ubuntu uses the GNOME desktop environment just like the Pure OS. Also both Pure OS and Ubuntu are forked from Debian. I wanted to be assured that what I do on Ubuntu will work on Pure OS. Now on the GNOME desktop, the libraries for creating a GUI are based on something called GTK Plus version 3. So that was the first thing I had to learn was to make a GUI that is usable on a phone. I chose Python as my programming language for speed, though a lot of the libraries are in C++, which I could have used as well. But Python and Linux mix very well, so I will stick to Python. I was actually able to make a GUI interface in a few hours, so that was not too bad. It would take multiple times that to make one for iOS or Android if I were just learning for the first time. Just so many tedious steps to make an app on those platforms. The next step for me was to decide what kind of app to build. I already have a simple app on the Google Play Store called Catch MITM or Catch the Man in the Middle, which is used to see if someone could be spying on your HTTPS traffic. So I decided to make a more sophisticated version of it for Linux. So let's check out what I built. So here I started Linux on my laptop and I'm going to launch my app called Catch MITM from the terminal. And there it launches this app, which is a network listening app. This actually listens in on a network and then we can kind of like see what's going on. So the first tab there says DNS trace. The second tab says web hack check. And the third says device scan. And we'll go through these in a moment. Now, in order for this to work, we're going to put some network traffic on. So I'm going to launch another terminal and we're going to send traffic and see if this app can trace it. So what we're going to do here is first do a ping. So we're going to ping microsoft.com and you can see it did spot it it showed up on the column on the left there on the dns log and it also showed up on the next uh, section which is web hack check is one of the domains and i'll show you how that works later here we're going to ping it again 
we're gonna ping cnet.com so as you can see any traffic on your network is being recorded on the app here we're pinging guardian.com and again it shows up on there so any app that runs on this computer it will detect any network activity and show it on the DNS log so there I tried Twitter and here comes YouTube so it doesn't matter what you're doing here it will log it on the DNS log with a timestamp and here it will list each unique domain so that you can go check each one of these for a man in the middle which I'll show you later let me ping Brax.me which is my app and there it is it shows up on the list now I'm going to click on check for man in the middle check MITM and then it says safe no HTTPS man in the middle and safe no DNS spoofing which is an attack that hackers will do to you let me check on CNET and there it says possible HTTPS MITM or it could be a redirect as well it may not necessarily be an attack checking on guardian.com that's safe microsoft.com and it's pinging us it's saying possible HTTPS MITM or again it could be a redirect it's safe and let's try YouTube and there YouTube is being blocked because my, I have an ad blocker on my network so the ad blocker is identifying that and and affecting the DNS but the uh, but the other one could be a redirect so it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad but it gives you something to check out now here I launched a browser and what happens is anything that the browser launches is automatically recorded on the DNS log and you can see some strange stuff going on there like all of those doubleclick.net and ad, ad clicks and beacons and there's so many things that goes on when you launch any website a lot of trackers so all those trackers show up here on the DNS log so that could be very very interesting for tracking and seeing what's going on if you're like interested in seeing what's on a website you can just watch it as you click on it you see what's doing over here if you click some of these they don't actually have any websites so there's no HTTPS certificate to check so this does not give any data so let me just check some of these and let's see what kind of data we get again these are not websites so these are not places you would normally go to so they may not have a website interface which is what we check for when we check for a certificate so s some of these don't register anything so not a problem what's more interesting at what we can do with this app because we can actually check to see if somebody's spoofing your DNS or modifying certificates by creating a new root certificate now this is a new section it's called device scan and what this does is list all the MAC addresses of all the devices on your network now for this demo I only show one device and also I spoof the MAC address so you don't get to check my location from the MAC address but I have two buttons here which are currently not yet running but I will get running in very shortly and one of them is to identify the device it will actually check the manufacturer of the MAC address to see what kind of device that is and the other one is the ability to jam the device and get it off the network which is more of a 
attack. It's an offensive mechanism, and I will build that in later on. So that's uh, a quick view of the basic features of the app. Now, I'm going to show you something that's kind of interesting, and that is to use the app in kind of a monitoring mode with nothing running. See, here I have no app running. Now, this is very useful when, when uh, you just let it sit here, and let's you just do a DNS trace to see what's going on when you're not using the computer. Because if there's a keylogger or a spyware, they're gonna operate even when you're not using the computer. So this will, if you leave this alone for long periods of time and you see something happening when you're not using the computer, it will show you that there's spyware. So here we're gonna act like we're an app and we're gonna go to a fake website just to show you if you know if there was an actual spyware in here and we're gonna ping a hacker website supposedly to show you that it's communicating with something and it will show up on there so this is kind of cool because you can just leave it overnight or anytime you're not leaving the computer and look at the log and it will kind of give you like a canary signal if something is happening when you're not using the computer So there you go, this is a network sniffing app that I built, which will run on a Librem 5. It doesn't have nice interfaces yet, but it will work, it will work by touch, and uh, it should work also on any Linux computer. To summarize my experience, I would say that the openness of the Linux platform allows me to do things that I couldn't easily do in Windows or a Mac, and definitely not on iOS or Android. Apple, Google, and Microsoft will definitely put hurdles to prevent this type of programming from being done. What I've done here is very powerful. It basically enables an average person to do what security experts do using Kali Linux. This is just a sample project I made in a couple of days. Give me some time with this and I could create a powerful security suite that makes more sense than your typical stupid antivirus. This could allow me to spot key loggers and hidden spyware that is very difficult to track without the tools that have a global view of my computer. Anyway, this is an exciting project. Even the simple program is not ready for distribution though, since I don't know how to package it yet for distribution so that it's easy to install. I wish I could run this program on my Windows or mobile phones so I can see what's actually going on with the spying of our activities. At least on the Librem 5, I will have a toolkit I can use to fight back. Please subscribe to my channel, folks. Let's get that algorithm to like this channel. It's all decided by the AI on YouTube. And don't forget to hit that notification bell.